Happy Friday. Happy first day of May. Um, today is the last day that we'll be talking about different elements of dialogue. So we talked about on Monday how dialogue could help us um, uh, with exposition and just explaining the world a little bit more. Uh, on Wednesday, we talked about how dialogue could help us clarify a character's internal conflicts, conflicts that uh, between what the character wants and what the character needs. One other element of dialogue that I want to talk about is just character voice. So getting that character's voice correct is a really important thing uh, to, to, to writing good, believable uh, fiction. So if you haven't yet, please do now get ready for some notes. Pause the video if you need to, and I'll see you on the next slide. So I want to start off by pointing out something that it's going to sound really obvious, but at the same time, it's it's a tricky thing to nail down when you're writing, and that's the fact that we all sound like ourselves. Not a single we we might sound similar to other people, but everybody has their own kind of unique way of speaking, the words that they choose the way that they pause, the way that they put sentences together or express themselves, you know, even just the tone of their voice, the way that their voice rises and falls, it's all very individual to how, um, to, you know, to who we are. And characters are not going to be any different. So when a character speaks, they need to sound like the person that they are, not like you. Uh, not like a robot, unless they are a robot, which, you know, we don't want, but but like the actual individual that we talked about your character being in last Friday's lesson, that this is a real person who needs to sound like a real person. So let's remember, first of all, that dialogue can explain the world around our character. So we've already used dialogue to do that. The dialogue can explain the character's internal conflict those things that the character wants uh, versus the things that the character needs. But dialogue can also reveal the character's personality and individualism. And when we talk about characters sounding like themselves and characters having a voice, then uh, what, what we're really talking about is characters having or or speaking in a way that reveals their personality and their individual traits so that they're somebody that the audience cares about right that the audience feels like they can connect with so how do we do this like how do we find it because a lot of us will find that we just want to write things and it doesn't actually sound like a person is speaking well um i'm going to make a suggestion to you I recommend interviewing your character. So this is another one of those crazy English teacher things. Like last Friday, I talked about characters being real people, right? Like you have to, you can't force them to do things that you have to listen to what they're, what they would, um, what they would do and kind of follow along in their paths. Um, but this is another crazy English teacher thing that's, that's going to say like, look, if this is a real person, you can sit them down and you can interview them, right? Obviously you, I'm, you have to use your imagination for this, but actually imagining a discussion that you would have or even writing down a discussion that you would have with that character where you ask them questions about yourself and you write their responses or hear their responses in their own voice will really help you understand, okay, I know who this character is. I know who they're, you know, who they're related to. I know what they like. I know what they don't like. I know where they've been, where they want to go. I know what they want. I know what they need. Then once you know all that, when you start interviewing them, the way that they respond to your interview questions will really help you start to write in their own voice so that when you start writing their dialogue, they, the way that they sound um, in their dialogue sounds like them and not just like you writing a whole bunch of words that are supposed to be them. So I'd like to look at an example. This is an example from the book The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn uh, by Mark Twain. It's one of the great American novels uh, in many English teachers' opinions, um, but it's, it's, good, it's good for 
any number of reasons, I highly recommend that you read this book. I don't know if it's something that you'll read in school, but I, I can't recommend it enough. We're just going to look at the very first paragraph. And one of the things that makes this book great, among many, is the way that Mark Twain really makes it feel like Huckleberry Finn is a person who's speaking and telling a story to the audience. Now, I'm going to read this. Because this is written so distinctly in Huckleberry Finn's voice, it may be difficult for me to, to uh, like, I, I may stumble a little bit more than I usually stumble. But at the same time, you'll really see that, you know, only Huckleberry Finn could say what he's going to say in this way. So this is the first paragraph. You don't know about me without you have read a book by the name of The Adventures of Tom Sawyer, but that ain't no matter. That book was made by Mr. Mark Twain, and he told the truth, mainly. There was things which he stretched, but mainly he told the truth. That is nothing. I never seen anybody but lied one time or another without it was Aunt Polly, or the widow, or maybe Mary. Aunt Polly, Tom's Aunt Polly she is, and Mary, and the widow Douglas is all told about, is all told about in that book, which is mostly a true book, with some stretchers, as I said before. So again, just one, uh, one paragraph. It, the whole book is written this way, uh, and you can imagine that it would take some getting used to. But it really does sound like Tom, or sorry, Huck, is speaking to the audience. Right? He has a very distinct way of of speaking. So let's look at what this paragraph accomplishes. First of all, it accomplishes some exposition. Uh, we know a bit about this world that uh, that Huckleberry Finn is aware that he's being written about by Mark Twain. Uh, he's got uh, he, somebody in his life named Tom Sawyer. There's a number of women in his life named Aunt Polly or Mary who are not liars. Um, we know that, um, so we know a bit about this world, right? We, at least the people who inhabit it and that something has happened before this book is written. We also get a bit of Huckleberry Finn's internal conflict. Not a lot of it. It's, you know, we have to read a bit between the lines to get it, but it's there. Uh, we can tell that he wants us to know the truth about him, right? Uh, so he's, he's already hedging about like, well, you don't know about me. Uh, you might have read about me, but you don't know about me. You know, this the other book about me had some, some he calls them stretchers in the book. But he also needs us to know that he's trustworthy, that when he tells us a story, that we will believe what, what his version of events are. So he's setting himself up to say, like, hey, you don't know me, but I can tell about you. So we you know, we know that that in internal conflict is going to uh, stem at least partly from his desire to, to reveal the truth. Uh, and then finally, when we get to voice, we can tell that he's a bit standoffish, right? Like he he's willing to speak, but he's also not trusting of a lot of people, that he's probably more trusting of himself. and he does trust these ladies, but everybody else he knows is a liar. And then you start to wonder, well, does that include him, right? Uh, it must include him. So he must be acknowledging that he's also a liar to some extent. Um, the other thing that we notice about uh, Huck is that, excuse me, he sounds intelligent, but also uneducated. Like he sounds like he knows quite a bit about the world, um, but he also sounds like he hasn't really been to school. He doesn't have a, bun a bit uh, much kind of, I guess, what we would call school learning, right? And that's largely accomplished through the way that Mark Twain uses diction. Remember, diction is word choice. So we can see some very specific word choices um, to how um, Huckleberry Finn speaks. Um, uh, you know, the use of kind of slang terms and, and all of that. But it's also accomplished through so something that we call syntax, which is the way that, that 
he constructs his sentences is very individual to him, right? You don't know about me without you have read a book by the name of The Adventures of Tom Sawyer, but that ain't no matter, right? That's a very distinct sentence. I doubt that there's very there are very many of us who would write that sentence in that or say that sentence in in that way. Uh, we've got places where he kind of cuts himself off and fills fills in some of the gaps. You know, the sentence about um, uh, I never seen anybody but lied one time or another without it was Aunt Polly or the widow or Mar maybe Mary Aunt Polly Tom's Aunt Polly she is and Mary and the widow Douglas is all told about in the book. Well, you we can see there in the middle where he's got those dashes kind of setting off where he's, you know, the syntax, the construction of the sentence is actually constructed in a way that sounds as though somebody's speaking. So as you are writing dialogue, you know, these three things that you're trying to accomplish, the exposition, the internal conflict, and also the voice, when you get to that voice part, making sure that you're choosing words that reveal your character. And, and constructing the way that the character would speak um, very deliberately so that it sounds like them is important. And so again, I'm gonna come back to this idea of interviewing your character. Now, I know it's the weekend and there is no homework over the weekend, but I think it, that you should give some thought to this, especially since this is a short video and you've got a little bit of time left over in what would technically be class. After interviewing your character, look back at the types of dialogue that you've already written for exposition and for the internal conflict. And are there, consider, are there changes to that dialogue, right? Like, did you realize in interviewing your character, oh, my character talks like this, or would say this, or wouldn't use this word, or would use those words? Um, are there changes to the dialogue that you've already written? that would really help bring out or enhance their individual voice. So that next week, when we actually get to planning and writing your story, you've got the setting, you've got the, um, you've got the character, you've established um, what, the, what the character's conflicts, internal conflicts are, uh, and um, you, know, you know what they sound like, and you can really kind of get down to the work of telling your story in a way that it should be much more lively and impressive than if we had just sat down and started writing the story from scratch. So that's where we'll start next week. I really highly encourage you to, to uh, do a little bit of this thinking um, before then, and I will see you uh, on Monday.